Hi, I'm a sand recap, and this is an animation to get Incredibles 2. The Incredibles embark on a brand new mission that requires a shift in family roles. While Helen goes out to save the world, Bob Parr must manage the house. Tony Reidinger is the subject of an interview conducted by Agent Rick Dicker. Tony tells him how he and Violet Parr, a classmate, met at a track meet and decided to go on a date. A supervillain who went by the name of the Underminer later burrowed up through the ground in the parking lot and stated that he was declaring war on happiness and peace. Every other person dissipated, however Tony wound up with no simple getaway course, so he dodged behind a vehicle and watched what unfurled. He saw a superhero family with two kids in matching suits. The mother told one of the kids to watch the baby Jack-Jack and patrol the perimeter to keep people out. Tony saw an opportunity to flee as the parents pursued the underminer, but then he heard the girl's voice. She was left alone with the infant when the boy sped off to perform perimeter duty. She ripped off her mask and threw it on the ground out of frustration. Tony then realized she was Violet. She approached him and tried to explain when she saw him staring at her, but he just ran away. He confesses to Rick that he regrets what he did and longs to forget seeing Violet in her supersuit. The underminer went back into the ground and dug a new hole which set off an underground explosion that made bank buildings fall to the ground. He extracted cash from the vaults by drilling through them with a vacuum suction tube. The underminer turns toward him and suctions him into the tube as Mr. Incredible confronts him. He landed in the storage vault used by the tunneler and used his super strength to smash his way out. The borer is put on autopilot by the underminer, and the two of them fought. The control panel of the borer was shattered when Mr. Incredible pushed the underminer into it. Mr. Incredible had to deal with the out-of-control drill after the underminer jumped into the vault and fled. It pierced the surface and entered the street. Violet was pushing Jack-Jack in his stroller and following Dash when he saw a dust cloud in the distance. Keeping up with the whirling drill, Elastigirl stretched out between buildings. The monorail track was destroyed when it collided with a support column as a vehicle approached. Frozone, their friend, suddenly entered and created a track that safely brought the monorail to the ground. The borer was still speeding down the street scuffing up against the sides of buildings as it went. Dash ran up to an elderly woman and pulled her out of the way just before the car crashed down after the drill struck and tossed it into the air. Jack-Jack was given to him by Violet in the stroller when she caught up to him. As the drill tore apart the supports, Elastigirl spread out across an overpass to prevent cars from crossing a bridge. Mr. Incredible threw a fallen street lamp into the treads and grabbed it, but it snapped right away. Dash grabbed Jack-Jack and ran up to him. In order to shield people around her from the machine, Violet threw force fields. As he passed her, Mr. Incredible returned Jack-Jack to her. The rest of the family followed the borer after Elastigirl jumped into its open hatch. They were able to see that it was headed straight for City Hall. Elastigirl stretched through the engine in an effort to spill the coolant and cause the engine to overheat. They stopped the drill just short of City Hall after Mr. Incredible jumped in and assisted her. Before the engine blew, Violet and Dash jumped in, and she created a force field around the entire family. They saw themselves surrounded by officers with guns drawn as they looked out the hatch. They appear in front of a massive structure, the DevTech headquarters. Winston greets them as soon as they get their security badges and take the elevator to the top floor. Additionally, a woman approaches, and Winston identifies her as Evelyn, his sister. They give each other a look when he tells them he saw what they did with their kids earlier, realizing he knows their secret identities. He explains that Rick was a huge Supers fan and that he used to work for him years ago, before the Supers were forced into hiding. The Deavers were able to get in touch with the Supers at any time thanks to Rick's installation of a direct phone line in their home. Winston tells them that a burglar broke into their house one night. His father tried to call Gazerbeam and Phyronic, but they didn't answer because supers were illegal. The robbers shot his father when they found him. Winston's mother passed away from grief a few months later. He asserts that it would never have taken place if the supers hadn't been hiding. Evelyn responds that her father ought to have run away at the first sign of trouble, and Winston responds that they have been at odds with each other for a very long time. With the intention of redressing some wrongs, Winston and Evelyn established DevTech, a telecommunications company, since then. According to Winston and Evelyn, the public's perception has kept the supers hidden. They only see the devastation caused by supers, not the difficult choices they make or the lives they save. To change that, Evelyn reveals that their badges have cameras and promises that their new super suits will also have cameras. They only need to be super, according to Winston, and he promises to ensure that they will all be legal once more. Bob asks eagerly about their first assignment, 
but Winston responds that Elastigirl ought to be the first super that the general public sees in action. Helen remains unsure, but Bob reluctantly agrees. Bob keeps failing to persuade Jack-Jack to remain in his bed. He finds Violet, who never left for her date, when he goes downstairs, and she tells him not to say anything. Bob returns to the living room, places Jack-Jack next to him, and the two of them fall asleep. A movie with a masked robber holding a man at gunpoint is playing on the television. After seeing the man in the mask, Jack-Jack looks out the window and sees a raccoon digging through trash. He uses his powers to get past the window as he approaches it. He grabs the raccoon's half-eaten chicken leg and throws it back in the garbage can. He then uses another power to use his mind to lift the lid and slam it down on the can. After that, lasers shoot out of his eyes, but they miss the raccoon. After hearing the noise, Bob gets up and goes outside to get Jack-Jack. At that point, the infants split into six distinct individuals. Bob learns that Jack-Jack possesses several superpowers. Bob receives a call from Helen as he returns Jack-Jack inside. He lies when he says that the kids are fine when she inquires about how things are going. He watches news reports about, about the dramatic rescue after she tells him about saving the runaway train. They hang up after she thanks him for taking care of the kids. After putting Jack-Jack and Dash to bed, Bob opens Dash's math book. He wakes Dash later and tells him he understands the math problems and can assist Dash before school starts. Bob is getting the kids ready for school the following morning. Violet tells him, looking awful, that she asked Tony why he stood her up yesterday at school, and he acted like he didn't know her at all. She hears from Bob that many people's memories of Rick and Helen have been erased as a result of them discovering their true identities. After Bob instructed Rick to do so, Violet learns that Tony's memory had been erased. She takes off, grabs her supersuit, puts it in the garbage disposal, and turns it on before hopping off. However, since the suit cannot be damaged, nothing happens to it. She grabs it with rage and throws it against the wall, pledging to never again be a hero. Dash asks Bob for help with his new math lesson back at the house. Bob is watching television when he comes across a story about how a billionaire had purchased The Incredible, a car he once owned when he was a public superhero. Bob finds the old car remote control after furiously rummaging through some boxes, believing his house and car had been destroyed. He causes the car to start on the screen by pressing a button. Dash grabs the remote and initiates button pressing. From the car that appears to be alive, everyone in the studio runs away. Bob returns the remote and turns it off. Jack-Jack suddenly sneezes and teleports into Violet's room. She runs screaming down the stairs as Jack-Jack transforms into a red monster and pursues her. Dash and Violet learn that Jack-Jack has powers, even though Bob hadn't told them, as he reverts back to his normal self. He denies telling Helen, Violet inquires. He yells at them, because I'm Mr. Incredible, and I'm trying to keep the house together through everything. When she asks why, Violet announces that she will call Lucius surprised. The Deavers sent them for protection after Void informs them that they are not safe. Just at that moment, Frozone comes up to them and stands in front of the kids, telling them that they aren't needed. They prevent him from closing the door, so he tries to. Dash activates the Incredible by pressing a button on the remote causing it to fly out of its garage and toward the house. Frozone slams the door and uses an ice wall to hit the supers. As the supers force their way in, Dash grabs Jack-Jack. Dash tries to run outside, but Void's portals keep putting him back inside the house. Violet constructs a force field around herself and her brothers to protect them from Helectrix's zapping blasts as Frozone fights Screech. The Incredible flies in and comes to a stop just in front of them as Crush Hour tries to crush the force field. Dash and Violet enter and escape, but Frozone is grabbed by the other supers and given goggles. Chad awkwardly tells the audience to stand by as they resolve their technical issues back at the studio. Evelyn watches on the ship as Frozone, Elastigirl, and Mr. Incredible lock the delegates in a room with the other supers. As they approach the bridge, a guard quickly disarms and announces on his radio that supers have taken the ship. The ship moves in the right direction toward the city as Elastigirl turns the wheel. The wheel is crushed by Mr. Incredible, rendering the ship unable to steer. Violet and Dash follow Jack-Jack to the bridge, where their parents and Frozone immediately attack them. Jack-Jack flies through the air and lands in Elastigirl's arms after Violet puts up a force field to protect him. Jack-Jack reaches up and removes her goggles, leaving her briefly perplexed. Evelyn rips off the goggles of Mr. Incredible and Frozone as she orders them to grab her. On the ship, Dash suggests turning the ship from the outside after Mr. Incredible informs the others that he cannot stop the ship. One of the foils is frozen by the Frozone, 
breaking, and sending the ship back to the water. Mr. Incredible wraps himself in the chain before lowering the anchor. Dash is waiting for him to turn the rudder before he is thrown into the water. Dash becomes more concerned over time. However, Dash presses the button to raise the anchor after the ship begins to rotate. Evelyn punches Elastigirl in the face while on the plane. Elastigirl sees a flare gun and fires it at Evelyn's oxygen tank causing an explosion and sending her flying out the window. Elastigirl makes a parachute, swings out the window, grabs Evelyn, and puts the plane on autopilot. Evelyn kicks herself free and starts falling again, refusing to be saved by a super, but Elastigirl grabs her once more and Void opens a portal above the water, putting them both safely on the ship's deck.